Star Carlisle of Star Child Films, and today we will be doing a tutorial over making an album cover. This will be a simple one. I'm not going to talk too much through this, but please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube page. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. You can message me at any time. I try to respond to everybody as much as I could, as um, much as I can. So. Um, Please excuse the audio because I am not recording this in real time. I am doing the audio separately. I'm just trying different things. But yeah, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube page and make sure you follow me on IG and Instagram. And if you're looking for a booking, hit me up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get jump jump. We're gonna go ahead and jump right on into this. What you saw me do so far is I just opened up a photo, opened up Photoshop, and I did a 1080 by 1080 pixel uh, artboard I guess that you call it custom artboard it's the, the one I use mainly for album covers <laughs> you know but uh, yeah so yeah let's go ahead and jump right on into this right now I'm just finding my image that I'm going to use and I'm picking it out and I'm putting it on a separate board on Photoshop so that way I can begin the cutting process because I do not want the whole background what I want is just the statue itself so I'm going to trace that statue out and I'm going to cut it via layer so that way I can just have the statue by itself. <laughs> Using the pen tool or the, the, the marquee tool, you know, it takes a lot of patience. It takes a keen eye, you know, you have to be meticulous about what you pick out, what you're cutting on so because as you can see I'm getting ready to mess it up in about three two one and there it is <laughs> so once I mess it up what you have to do is just control Z it I mean command Z it if you're on a Mac control Z if you're on a PC but yeah just command Z it and you have to start all over I'm gonna speed this up so you guys can basically so we can get through this because this part takes forever. So yeah, speeding this part up. I would have kept the shadow, but I I felt like it would have been different from the background that I was gonna create myself. So I didn't take the shadows with it. I just got the statue itself. Nine times out of ten, that's what you want to do because you want to be able to create your own shadows. But one thing I learned about photos, Photoshop, you know, Lightroom, or filming with a Canon, with a Canon or a Sony. I have a Sony right now. I have both Canon and Sony with. I film mainly with a Sony right now. But the one thing, you know, you want to be able to control your light. So as you can see, I went ahead and cut it via a uh, lay, cut the layer. And now I'm placing it on my artboard that I'm going to actually use to make the album cover. I'm scaling it down to size. <clears throat> I have a theory when it comes to creating the album cover. I believe that less is more. The less you have on your album cover, the more the more it shows who you are as an artist. I feel like when you got a whole bunch of stuff just crowded all over your album cover, you're overcompensating for something. So with me, I always, I always believe in less is more. The less you have to do to it, the less busy it looks, the better it is for you in the long run. 
what I'm doing is I'm matching the color for the background so right now I'm just going to the color overlay oh no I'm using the gradient I'm sorry and like, like I said I'm looking at this as we're, as we're going through it now so I'm doing the gradient overlay and I'm going to choose a color from the statue so it won't be that far off I'm gonna do that to both sides. I'm gonna pick a dark side and a light light side. So on the left side of my gradient, it'll be dark, and on the right side, it'll be the lightest of the statue. And I'm gonna name this one Greek something. I can't remember what I said on there, but yeah, it's Greek something. So now I'll always have that gradient look. <clears throat> Right now, I'm just testing out which, how do I want it to show, and I think I'm going to just choose radi uh, radial. Yeah, I'm going to choose radial because if it makes it look, it gives me the look that I'm looking for, closest to what I'm looking for. Once you guys please excuse me because I will be eating chips while I'm doing this tutorial. So don't feel any kind of way. So now that I got the pretty much close to the tone that I want for the backdrop, I'm going to use the uh, curves menu to just pull some darkness. I'm, I'm going to put some shadows onto the statue. I'm going to try to grab some sta shadows on the statue while maintaining some of the light. I kind of like the one-sided look. It makes the statue look old, but... It makes it look almost 3D-ish. You know, I want to boost the reds a little bit just to bring the red stone color out of the statue. That adds to the shade and the shadows and everything. So it helps with that, as you can see. And this is the overall look I'm going for. I may touch it up again. I'm not sure. I can't remember what I actually did when I was doing this. But... This is what it's looking like right now. Right now, I'm just messing with the shadows. Like I said, you want to be able to create your own shadows. So I'm throwing some shadows behind the statue. And I'm going to use more than one. I learned this from another YouTube uh, YouTuber. I can't remember his name, but he, he taught me the importance and the use of these shadows. So what I'm doing now is I'm just throwing some shadows behind the statue to make it look like the statue is in the foreground or poking out of the album. The best thing about this album cover is I can also do a 3D album cover for this I can make the album cover basically 3d so the head if you turn the album cover to the side the head is sticking out of the flat surface
Right now I'm just looking for different type of brushes to see what kind of different look I can make out of it. I'm not gonna, actually going to keep this. This is just my tester. I'm just testing it out just to see what I can make of it. What I had in mind was an old kind of vintage look where the brush tool that I'm using will make a stamp like in random places around the photo as you can see. You kind of give it that ancient look. But <clears throat> Like I say, when you're doing, when you're making, building album covers and things like that, it's all trial and error. And what I learned from doing this is, one, you have to have the right color. If you're not using the right color when you make your marks on the, on the artboard, it's not going to look right and you're going to feel like you lost your vision in it. So, you, for one, you always have to make sure that when you start, you get the color that you want and then you start placing because as you can see I used pure white and it just didn't sit right with me although I did like the one that was behind the statue and the one that was kind of off to the side in the front but yeah, see that right there I don't like that one and this is what ultimately makes me just give up on doing that part <laughs> You know what? Let me just find a different way. Because this just isn't working for me. Even if I mess with the shadow, the op op opacity in the field, it just didn't sit right. So, like I said, it's all trial and error. Just try different things like I'm doing, trying different brushes, just to see how it goes. I totally think I left my phone in the car too. Well, not in the car, on my bike. <clears throat> Shout out to all my Harley riders out there. I ride the O2 Street Glide. I love that beast. Sucks that my left front speaker is blown though. So I gotta get a new front speaker. So, as you can see, I found the actual brush that I want to use. Now, I'm messing with the... Oh, gosh. How am I forgetting these words now? I'm ch choosing how I want it to blend. That's what I'm messing with the blending options. And I'm looking for the blending texture that will give me the right look that I'm looking for. And I'm going to go with difference because... Phew, look at that. I mean... That alone just screams, don't touch me anymore. But, you know, as us creators, we try different things. I do like that black, but nothing stood out more than difference. So using that type of brush tool, painting it on the whole background, not actually on the whole background. I created a, a new layer and put that brush print on that layer by itself. So that way I can cut it on and off if I need to. But using that brush layer with difference made a world of difference, as you can see. It gives the statue that real vintage old look like. Wow. This album looks like it'll be fire. <laughs> I have different type of parental advisory stickers. This is my cookie cutter one because everybody likes to use this one. I have a different one that I love to use more, but nobody really likes to use that one. It's the one that drips. So, you know, if you want to use that one that drips, I can show you guys what it looked like. But, you know. So this is what we're looking like so far. 
Let me make sure this is centered. I love how Photoshop has these snap to lines that you can just snap to and it'll, autom it'll automatically go to the center. And get those crosshairs going, it's like, ah, locked in. Now, go to the add-ons of what the, what the artist wanted for this album cover. These are the main, these are the main items that the artist wanted for the album cover, so. <clears throat> Want the blue rag, of course. I'm deciding how I want to place it on there. Which doesn't look too bad like that, but I don't think I'm gonna stick with that. Right now I'm just I'm playing with the inner shadow so I can take away some of the white lines that you see on the side of, of the bandana. Figuring out where you want to place it makes a world of difference because it makes it's what makes it look authentic or you know how it should be versus looking like you just threw something together. And the last thing you want to do, especially if you want to continue doing this and getting paid to do this, is make it look like let it look like it's just thrown together. I'm gonna just leave that there, see how it looks, how it fits right there. How it, how it looks when I add the other one. Now you can find all kinds of uh, props, tools, and things like that online. I found this bandana, these bandanas online. So if you, you know, I don't have any link to where they at, but you know, you just go in there and find it. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out if I can turn it around, give it the 3D, you know, look, but, you know, stupid mistakes, trial and error. You cannot turn the bandana around unless you do the whole front. I cannot, so, therefore, that one does not work. can't get it to cover his whole head either so I'm gonna use this one yeah. now let you see how that looks looks like a fit right perfect fit but I don't like the color of it I want to change the color make the color a little bit darker and it also gave me the feeling to pull this bandana down a little bit and instead of around the face I'm gonna put it around the neck and I'm gonna try to make it look decent there I'm just not feeling the headband though it looks drawn so more than likely we'll probably be changing that I found my position of where I want this bandana to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the look of it being under his beard. So wrapping around his neck, looking like it's under his beard. And again, folks, like I say, it's trial and error. So what I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning up the areas. 
And now I used a soft brush. Now I'm going to use a hard brush so I can harden that line that I just drawn. So it'll look folded rather than faded. Now what I could also do to this is I could throw a, a bevel and emboss on it and angle it at the top so that the top looks like it's, it's folded over, but you know, less is more. And I believe that works for me, yeah, that works for me. So what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm gonna go back to the bandana, the headband and see if I can work with this color in a little bit because it's just, it's not where I want it to be. I think I'm gonna try to darken it. Even when I darken it, it still looks drawn. I think I'm gonna use my other bandana I have lined up. I had another one that's better. This one, this one is a real bandana and it's used, I can use it better than the last one. The last headband. The last headband was just too drawn on for me. So this one I can play with and I kinda like this, but you know what? The slanted style just says so much more, so I think I'm gonna do it just like that a little bit. Let me get rid of this bottom bandana, because we don't need that anymore. Let me size this up, make sure this is fine. There we go, let me squeeze that a little bit. There. Right there. Yep, this looks a whole lot better. Now that you can see, you see how it looks like it's wrapping around his head, especially at the top left corner. I love that, how that looks. Let me play with the, 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 the coloration of it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna use the levels. Yep, I'm gonna use the levels and I'm gonna darken it a little slightly just to see if I can get it to match the other bandana. Bring, some, bring that white out just a little bit. And yeah, I think that's it. So right now I'm looking for one of my backdrops, one of these overlay, overlay uh, photo filters that I can use because I want to add a little bit of a little bit more grunge. The filter I'm looking for is like a film damage filter. I have, uh, as you can see, hundreds. And hundreds of different overlays and PNG files that I use on occasions. That looks close, but uh, Let's use that one. I like how the edge is dark. It gives it that kind of vignette around the edges. I'm gonna stretch it and I'm gonna change the blending mode. And I'm gonna use yeah, soft light as you can see. And this, this is the overall look that it gives me. I'm gonna move it below the bandanas because it kind of throws the bandanas off a little bit. 
for the blending. Darken this bandana just a little bit. get into the text adding a name and title to the cover the name of the artist artist is OD Da Vinci shout out to OD Da Vinci for looking towards your boy to make his album cover first stop of course, as you can see, if you don't know by now, I got his name spelled wrong, but that's an easy fix when you're in Photoshop. You can change it at the last minute, which is what I do. So you won't see me change it in the tutorial, but you'll actually see the finished cut after, I, after it's done. 28, 11, 13, go. Right now I'm adding some shadows. Like I say, the shadows is where it adds, adds to the details of the album cover. I'm gonna play with the placement a little bit. See how high up do I want it? Do I want it low? Do I want it high? I think I'm just I'm gonna end up leaving it high on the placement. Now I'm getting into the title of the song. Which is six four. As you can see, I'm bringing my sixteen. And rather than putting and creating the numbers together, I'm going to create them separately because I want them kind of offset from each other and hiding behind the statues, as you can see. Like the way that looks. In order for me to keep the same size, I'm just going to copy and and drag this one over here <laughs> and just go into the text and change the number to four. Drag that up just a little bit. Probably pull that in closer to the statue. You always want to take the time to just look at your, what you're creating just to make sure everything is aesthetically pleasing to the eye when you look at it. Like I said, at four, I'm going to think I'm going to bring it up and a little bit closer. It's kind of far offset. You don't want to hide it so much that you don't know it's a four, but you don't want so much showing because it's supposed to look like it's behind the statue. So. As you can see, I'm going to bring those two a little bit closer together. Yep, there we go. I think that's it right there. That looks good. And now I'm going to join these two together to make them one file. Make them one layer. <clears throat> Name it 64, 64. And now I'm going to play with the blending options. Like I said, you want to add the shadows. I'm using the bevel and emboss. I'm not going to go deep into the details of which, of how I set my bevel and emboss. You can just look at it from here. Like I say, trial and error. I'm just basically playing around with it to see what looks aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And here's the trick that I didn't know at the moment. When you go and you and you when you're dealing with layers and you're layering something, you have a layer that's 
a, has a different blending option on it like uh, for the the film damage the damage look that I have on there with the vignette I put a soft light uh, blending option on that and putting my letter putting my numbers under that turned my letters black so what I'm doing now is I'm just going ahead and I'm creating the shadows and everything because I know how I want it to look and now I have to go in here and change the hue to dark which gives it the opposite light it's weird I have no clue why it does that you know I'm just happy that I know how to correct it and how to change it and how to play with it so now I'm just playing with the blending options as you see to get white back out of that out of the letters I had to go towards the dark side of the hue of saturation so right now I'm just edging it along making sure it looks aesthetically pleasing I like the way that looks it looks like it, it belongs it looks like it's poking out from the background I'm just collapsing all my layers just so I can get a good look at it. I'm gonna play with my titles just to see where it looks good at. Under which layer? I don't like that. That's too dark. It darkens the title a little bit too much. So I believe I'm just gonna push that back up. with the adjustment options yeah I'm just gonna push that back up one layer put it on top of my my vintage grunge layer and then overall I'm gonna turn the vibrance all the way up as much as possible and then take out some of the shadows when you turn the vibrance up it brightens all of the colors not just one or not just the top color it brightens all of the colors like the shadows the highlights the mid-tones and the lights so now i'm just going to add some contrast to it just to give it that make give it that shadowy look so it looks real aesthetically pleasing to the eye and there we have it. Once again, guys, I thank you for listening to my tutorial. I hope you find it pleasing. I hope you learn something from it. I have learned something from playing with it, from building thousands, hundreds, I mean, not like hundreds or thousands, I don't know, I, I've done so many that I just can't count, but every time I do it, it's a learning and teaching um, opportunity for myself, and I hope you guys take it as a learning and teaching moment for you guys too, for you guys that already know how to do it and probably critiquing me, thanks, yeah, just thanks, <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, yeah, let me add a little bevel to the whole image. Give it that gloss, that, sh that shadowy look. Make it look like it's a plaque. Like that. Just changing the size. We're going to the top right corner with it. I like that. That looks pretty nice. Turning up my shadows and my highlights on my blending options. Playing the light because you see any slight change will change everything that you did so you have to be careful you have to know how to reverse what you just did if you don't like what you did but overall guys this is what the cover will look like i appreciate you guys for tuning in and watching my tutorial i hope you got something out of it like i said i am star carlisle of star child films and this This is the album cover.
to Odega Vinci's 6-4. Coming soon.